this lesson is on trig functions. The first trig function is your sine x graph. This is a basic formula for all sine graphs. f of x equals a sine x bracket bx minus p close bracket plus q. Each of these le letters represent something different. So the first is a that represents our amplitude. That is how high our maximum and minimum points reach. If there is no value in front of the sign, we assume that the amplitude is one. With B in front of the X, that changes the period of the graph. The period is basically how many degrees it is for one full graph. So if we're here, if you look at this sine graph, it goes until 360. It starts at zero, so its period is 360. If there was, if there's a number in front of this X over here, it will change your period depending on that number. In order to calculate the new period, you would take 360 and divide it by the number that rep that B represents. For example, if it was bracket 2x, then your period would be 360 divided by 2. So then your new period would be 180. So then one full graph would fit into 180 degrees. The next thing is your p-value. This shifts your graph left and right. If you have plus p, then your graph moves to the left. If you have a minus p, your graph shifts to the right. For example, if they had x minus 30, you would start 30 degrees to the right. So your graph would start somewhere here and go there. With q, this represents your shift up and down. So if you generally start at zero, if q is zero, however, if they said q was one you would start at one and it would be one unit higher up a positive represents a movement up and a negative represents a movement down this graph over here which i've labeled f of x is the basic sign graph and all these letters so a b p and q are changes that would happen to this basic graph so if we had an amplitude of two, it would be this graph just stretched higher up and lower down. If B was two, you would have the graph forming in a shorter distance. If it was P, you're, the same graph just shifted left or right. And if Q, then just shifted up and down. So that's how it is. You can use your basic sign graph to figure out the formula of a different sine graph. So if we look at this other sine graph that I've drawn in over here, we can see that the graph has a higher amplitude. It, it reaches two. It still starts at zero and it reaches two. So our, we know our A value will be two, <clears throat> which I've written in here, f of x equals two sine. Now, the, our period is still 360 because we start at negative 90 and we end at 270 degrees. So that is a distance of 360. So we have a B value of 1. Our shifting left and right, you can see that we've now started at negative 90 and not at 0. So our graph has shifted 90 units to the left. When we move to the left, we plus, so therefore we're going to have x plus 90 degrees. <clears throat> A lot of different um, changes can be made to the basic graph. It's just trying to understand what each of these letters represent and then trying to figure out the new formula for them. Also, a side note, if you are given the formula and asked to draw it, you can do that on your calculator. 
you can work it out on your calculator <clears throat> and get coordinates. Or you can use what you know about amplitude, period, shifting to draw it yourself. So if we were given this and asked to draw, we can say, okay, we know the period is going to be two to negative two. We know we have to start 90 degrees to the left, and that's the only other changes from the basic graph. Then you can just join your graph together. If you find that too difficult, you can also easily use your calculator by using your table um, function on your graph by pushing mode. And depending on what calculator you have, the table selection, and you just type in your equation of your graph, and it would give you points to plot, and then you just join the dots. The next graph we have is a cos graph. <clears throat> it has the very similar setup, a cos bx minus p plus q, and they, again, all represent the same thing as they do in the sine graph. A is still my amplitude, B is still changing the period, P is still my shift left or right, and Q is still a shift up and down. If we look here, this is my basic cos graph, as I've labeled it. It looks slightly similar to sine, except it's just kind of starting somewhere else. So an important way to distinguish it, a sine graph, a general basic sign graph will look more like a snake and a cos graph will look more like a cup. So C for, S for snake for sign and C for cos and cup. That's an easy way to remember it. Okay, then here we are given a different cos graph and now we can try to find the formula using what we know. So we are going from negative we are going from zero to negative two. So I haven't labeled that, but just basing off of that negative one about halfway, I'm just gonna assume that's negative two. So zero to negative two. So we know that my amplitude is still one because it's the distance from the middle to the maximum and the middle to the minimum is still one unit. So my A value is going to be one. But now one full graph is fitting in 180 degrees. So in my 360 degrees, I have two full cos graphs. That means I've got a different B value. I now have two full cos cycles fitting in my 360. Therefore, my new B value is going to be two because 360 divided by 2 will give me 180, and that is the period for this graph. Then we have not shifted my graph left or right. It's still in the middle, even though the period is shrunk. It still starts at 0. However, with my Q value, it doesn't start at 1. It starts at 0. So it has shifted one unit down. Therefore, the minus one over here. If you were given this equation and asked to draw the graph, you could use the fact that because my B value is two, I would have to do a full cycle in 180 degrees and shift it one unit down. You can adjust from the original. Or if you would prefer to use your calculator, you could type this into your calculator using your table function and plot the points and join the dots. Between the cos and sine graph, I've, got, I've gone through each of the different um, changes that can happen. I've done two in each. So in the sine graph, they've, we've used a change in amplitude and a change in P. And in the cos graph, we use a change in period and a change in Q. Then we move on to a tan graph. A tan graph is, can look quite confusing, but it's actually one of the easier ones. This is a basic tan graph. You can see these dotted lines at 90 and 270. These are my restrictions. There cannot be anything at this point or at 270. 
So that is why we have dotted lines here to indicate our asymptotes. Okay. Generally, your time graph will look like this. It'll slope upwards here, do a curve here, and what and one over there. It actually is just repeating this over and over. So this would actually extend to that part there, and this would extend to that part there. But it's this is a basic view of what it would look like. It also has the same format of A, B, P, and Q. If we had a change in A, our amplitude would be different. But since the tan graph goes to up to infinity, you don't really notice this as much. Um, then for B, if our period changed, say now we had 2x, so our period was now became 180, we would then have this full set, this full graph fitting in the space between 0 and 180. With P, if we shifted the graph left or right, again, the same thing, you would just start either further right or further left. And Q, the same, either starting further up or further down. But it would ultimately end up looking very much like this because a tan graph, since it goes to infinity, is they kind of all relatively do look the same. Um, and to find the equation, you could you can use the changes that we have spoken about with the others over here. However, it's not one, it's a less common graph to be asked an equation for because it's so difficult to find changes in this graph because it goes to infinity on either y, on, on the y-axis. And that is all for your trig functions.